by 1995, the Sega Genesis had amassed a huge assortment of games. Sega had established itself as the world leader when it came to sports games, but the system also featured a huge number of action platformers, shoot 'em ups, and even puzzle games. Two genres the platform lacked compared to its SNES rival, though, were action adventure games and RPGs. At the end of its lifespan, Sega tried to address this. One of the ways it did so was to publish Beyond Oasis for the system in 1995. The game uses an overhead view, much like The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past and Crusader of Senti, but it has an interesting graphical style that really sets it apart from those games. The sprites are large and semi-cartoony, and the backgrounds are a bit blocky. Still, it managed to look great for its time in its own innovative way. It really has a look all its own, and anyone that's played it knows what I mean. In Japan, Beyond Oasis was known as Story of Thor, Successor of the Light. However, oddly enough, I can't find any way in which this game is actually related to Thor or Germanic paganism at all, and it explores Middle Eastern themes instead. After all, you play as a prince named Ali, who receives a mystical gold armlet that once belonged to a powerful wizard. According to legend, the armlet was created long ago to summon four powerful spirits. A water spirit, fire spirit, shadow spirit, and plant spirit, in order to counter the evils of the one who holds the mystical silver armlet. So the basic objective of the game is to, uh, seek out the silver armlet holder and destroy him. Simple enough, right? I mean, I don't really understand how that premise has anything to do with the game's title of Beyond Oasis, but it works for me, I guess. Combat in Beyond Oasis really isn't exactly what you might think it is just by viewing footage of the game. Even though it looks like it could be a clone of A Link to the Past or Soul Blazer, it honestly feels more like a beat-em-up. This is because most enemies take multiple hits to defeat, and the combat animations really make it feel like combos done in the traditional beat-em-up style. Enemies have health bars like in those games, and you can crouch and do jump attacks. This really was a fun way to incorporate beat-em-up gameplay into a game like this though, and it really makes it one of a kind for its era. Ali's primary weapon is a knife, but as you proceed in the adventure, you can gain a large number of other weapons like swords, bombs, and crossbows. You can replenish health and magic when injured through various foods and items, but Ollie's pouch only has 16 slots and identical items aren't grouped, so that is a bit frustrating. What makes the weapon system unique though is that the game's items are breakable. This means that if you use a particular weapon or other item too much, it will become unusable. Believe it or not, if you manage to break an item in this way, there's no way to restore it. So that player is forced to endure a setback that can prevent them from completing the game as easily. Character and enemy animations are very impressive in this game, and even projectiles and fireballs translate into the gameplay extremely well. The creative team behind Beyond Oasis clearly wanted to make fighting each enemy its own independent experience, and I think they really succeeded in that. Just take a look at this giant dragon that breathes flames and hurls fireballs at you. This is just really awesome, and just about every boss is like this. Lots of memorable moments. As you can probably tell from the story, one of the central ideas of the game comes from using the four spirits to overcome the game's challenges. The dungeons are filled with monsters and basic puzzles like other games of this kind, but what makes it most unique is you can only get through certain areas by using certain spirits in the right way. For instance, the Shadow Spirit allows you to reach stakes across chasms, and the Fire Spirit allows you to melt blocks of ice. Each spirit has three abilities, one that works by pressing the A button once, another that works by pressing the A button twice, and yet another one by holding the A button and releasing it. This was a little odd to get used to at first, but once you get the hang of it, you can utilize your spirit abilities efficiently. Beyond Oasis really is more of an action-adventure game than an action RPG. This is because it doesn't really have a leveling system like games in the latter category, and the gameplay embraces more of a style of an overhead Zelda game than a game like Secret of Mana. You have health and magic gauges in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, and your maximum capacity can only be expanded by finding special elemental jewels and heart containers of sorts throughout the adventure. 
The one thing I dislike, and I mean really dislike about Beyond Oasis, is the soundtrack. Instead of a collection of fantasy-oriented tunes that you might expect, this game's score is a series of ambient sounds and synthesizers that come off really weird at times. It wouldn't be a big issue if some tracks like those were inserted at particular moments, but the entire soundtrack is like this. I guess it's unique enough that some may like it, but I really wasn't a fan. The grindy Sega sound chip just didn't seem made for it, even if one wanted to explore an interesting approach to sound like this. Thankfully, there's many ways to play Beyond Oasis today. The original cart isn't out of this world expensive, but it's also available on the Nintendo Switch Online Store. The best and easiest way of all to play it though is probably through Steam, where it's only 99 cents. You truly can't beat that. Beyond Oasis is a fantastic game and really stood out for its time. It gave the Genesis a worthy rival to some of the best SNES action-adventure games, even though it came out so late in the system's life. The dungeons are creative, the combat is fun, and the spirit system is interesting. In fact, the whole experience feels unique and rewarding. The odd soundtrack and broken items are a bit frustrating, but every other element of this title works well to make it into a classic. Beyond Oasis features some of the best graphics and animations the Genesis had to offer, and it may even be one of my top 10 favorite games on the platform. If you enjoy a lot of the same games I cover, this one is a must-play too. But what do you think about Beyond Oasis? How do you think it compares to The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past and Crusader of Senti? Tell me in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell below for more retro gaming content, and join my Discord community linked in the description. Also, please consider supporting my channel via YouTube's Join feature to receive member bonuses such as advanced videos and complete video transcripts.